Hello and welcome to the Man of Legacy podcast. This is episode number seven. I'm your host, Coach Dennis, and here we talk about men, women, families, sex, masculinity, and life in general. Today, my guest is fellow good guys to great men coach Jeff Allen from Great Men Move Mountains. Welcome, Jeff, and thanks for coming back. Hey, Dennis. Thanks a lot. I'm excited about our topic today. Yeah, I am too. Today, we're, guys, we're going to talk about two things today. We're going to talk about stage two of the coaching journey, uh, grow, and then we're going to talk about our retreat Jeff and I are putting on in March at the end. Mm -hmm. All right. So the last time we talked, Jeff, we talked about stage one of the coaching process, stopping, causing further harm, screwing up, you know, that hummingbird behavior, shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, things like that. And today we're going to talk about stage two of the process, grow. And at this point, hopefully you've stopped making big mistakes. And now it's time to grow your value as a man and grow the healthy space between the two of you in the relationship. What are some yeah, of the exactly. things? We, yeah, what are some of the things you see at this stage? Yeah, I want to say uh, so at this stage of grow, this is about growing your own value as a man, identifying who you are, what you believe in and also growing a healthy space between the two of you, between you and her. And that, that word space is something that I heard, Dennis, I think you heard it as well, of the I need space or, uh, you know, this isn't going well, this isn't working out, I love you but I'm not in love with you anymore. And when she says, I need space, well, what the hell does that mean? And how do I do that in a healthy way? It means the world's of, ending to most of us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's a part of stage two as well, which builds, of course, on the foundation of, uh, the stop fucking up, stop making mistakes. Right? Yeah. So here we go. And this is the stage I often see where a man's partner initially is going to meet a lot of the positive changes he's making with skepticism. We hear comments like, yeah, I've seen this before. This isn't going to last. You're going to slip back into your old bad habits. You've done this before. Um, and I kind of look at it as the guys were unaware before. They were trying to change their, their habits, their behaviors to please her, to get the validation, the approval, to get the bitching to stop, whatever it may be. It was, they weren't doing it for themselves. Now, these changes are because they are working on themselves and trying to improve themselves. Yeah, this is a huge theme that you and I see with almost every one of the guys that we work with, that we coach, which is we learn from our fathers the best they could teach us, or we learn from society the best uh, at that moment or at within that period of time. And we didn't have a elder council of men to really teach us, well, what does it mean to be a good man or healthy in relationship or to have strong values and boundaries? And how do you stand up for yourself in a way where she still, she still wants to see you at the end of the day? You know, she still wants to have coffee with you on Sunday morning. You yeah. could beat your chest, but she's not going to like that, not going to want to be around that. Uh, so how do you do this in a healthy way? I didn't learn that from my father. I mean, Neither he put food, I. you know, food on the table. And so this is exactly that. It's, well, what do I believe in, in and of myself? So real quick, one of the exercises I have guys do when we're doing coaching is called the alien abduction exercise. I think Steve does this as well. Dennis, I'm pretty sure you do this, even if you don't call it alien abduction. But it goes like this. Let's say right in front of you, your wife was abducted by aliens, beamed away, and somehow you knew she would never come back. And at first, there'd be, of course, tremendous grief and fear, and what am I going to do? And oh my gosh, and you know, I've lost this person that's important to me. Regardless of what's happening right now today, you'd still feel great loss, of course. And then the goal is write about, or what would you do next? What would you do next in your life? What would you do with your children, or where you live, or with your job, or would you change trajectories in your life? What would you go for if you didn't have to think about or, or if you didn't consider yourself in a relationship at all, period, right now? What would you be doing with your life otherwise? That's a, door, that's a knock on the door of how to know what are my values and my nuts. What am I going to go for in the world? And I just realized, Dennis, you should probably explain what does nuts mean? Tell us what nuts means. You know. We talk about it, and the guys we work with know, but not everyone will. It is your non-negotiable, unalterable terms. And it is your, like the Knights of the Round Table had their code of conduct. And it is basically your code of conduct, how you are going to conduct yourself and behave, even when no one is watching. 
You know, you're a person of high character. You're not going to cheat. You're going to, you know, you're also going to not have negative self-talk. There's a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it may be something that is, I'm a man that will be honest and not lie, you know. Um, I'm a man that will e express himself and his sexuality freely. There's a lot of different things, and we work with the guys on that, but it's, this is how I'm going to show up as a man, even when no one is watching, you know, it's about character. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we got that acronym from the book from Wayne Levine, Hold On To Your Nuts, which is one of the first three books that I recommend guys grab at the very beginning uh, to really start to understand, well, what, what, how do I find out what I care about? Or how do I know what I want to stand up for? And that's a part of this stage too, of the growing your own value within yourself, growing your own perspective on your value as a man in this world. I just had a new call with a new potential client uh, yesterday, actually, and he's had a ton of insecurity and it's led to a lot of these nice guy habits where he tries to give so he can get something later. He tries to just please and thinking that that's the best strategy, which <laughs> you and I both found out the hard way that it's not. Yeah. And when I asked him, how do you bring value to the world as a man? And he said, you know, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm even valuable as a person in this world. Now, now this is a guy who is a top level mechanic. He can fix almost anything. He works with horses, works with his hands his whole life. He's, he made more money in high school than his high school teachers, he told me. And <laughs> this is a guy who thinks, you know, how am I even valuable in this world? So he has not had anyone tell him, you are valuable. You're going to be okay. You just don't know the strategies. You just don't know how to be that man that you want to be. No one was there to show you, just like no one was there to show me. Again, I love my dad, put food on the table. You know, awesome dude, had no idea how to teach me about relationships. Yeah. So and that's a big piece of this. You know, I, I look at it, guys like the one you described, they're adrift. They just haven't found that anchor they need to move forward. And working on your nuts is not a five minute easy peasy. It's a lot of looking inside of yourself and it, they get revised and, you know, some guys have very, you know, just a small handful. Some have pages, but, you know, it, well, it's yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. To, I was going to interrupt. I was going to say, uh, because of the stage in your life, when you find this work, usually all those are challenged. So tell me about that, Dennis, with you when, you know, you had been 17 years in uh, marriage and things started to cross boundaries. And, you know, what would you have done when you first got together with her versus 17 years in? Oh, my God. You know, had I been aware early on she was having an emotional affair, I'd been like, fuck that. I'm done. I'm out of here. You know, but 17 years in, we had two kids. We you see if I go back to when the divorce hit. That would have been, my son would have been around 14 or 15 and my, 15 and my daughter 11. So I was the prime example of what Steve talks about in his book. Tell me what I got to do to fix it. Tears. I would have done anything to save the marriage because, oh my God, I don't want to divorce. I don't want to lose my kids. Uh, and. Uh, you know, it's amazing. And I was still that way when I found out and saw the phone records and that person she put in touch with me to become my business partner in real estate, who was a coworker of hers, was more than a coworker. And uh, yeah, I handled that a lot differently than I would have 17 years or 10 years earlier. And I sure as hell handled it a lot differently and a lot worse than I would now. Yeah, that's, that's why the writing out our nuts and what we believe in and the man that we believe that we are in the world takes some time because we're faced now in these difficult relationship situations, whether it's cheating or I'm, I'm in love with you and you know, I, I love you but not in love with you. We're faced with the loss of our entire reality in that moment potentially. Oh my God, 
Yeah, I, I, and, and her identity, exactly. It's like the whole second half of the book has been ripped out and she's holding it in her hand and she's got a, you know, a, a blowtorch in the other hand and it's almost like we feel she's in control of igniting the rest of our entire future. And that's where guys come to us and that's why it's, they're so entrenched in this nice guy. Oh, if I just make her happy, she won't ignite the rest of our lives. And that's not going to lead to a relationship full of respect and passion and uh, masculine feminine polarity with her. If you're just on your heels or if Medusa can burn you down at any time and that's how you look at it, or you're another child in the, in the family, in the, in the house, if you're just a child and waiting for her to tell you what to do, none of that is going to turn her on. That's not what she wants in a relationship. Even if she says, do this and we'll be good, Venice, right? If she, if she would have said, okay, do one, two, three, and you did one, two, three, and a year from then, she was still unhappy. Where do you go from there? Three, four, five. So <laughs> here's the funny part. I talked with a, with a man here before the holidays and he was saying his brother is in that that spot tell me what i need to do do this and she goes all right you need to do this this and this she goes but it's still not going to be it's not going to be enough no matter what he does mm, yeah and she goes i'm going to keep putting down hurdles it, yeah it doesn't change there's no respect you know and the, the truth is, I'm not excusing any of the women's behavior when it's inappropriate, but sometimes our behavior led to, contributed to the disconnect. You know, I think that's a safe statement. So once we recognize that, and when there's children involved, and depending on all of what's happened, it doesn't mean it's a completely lost cause that you can't salvage the relationship. And sometimes they're far stronger and better when both partners want to do the work and work on themselves and then work together. Um, even though it is not as it's easier to say, I'm just going to burn it to the ground. Yeah. I mean, and of course that's a whole can of worms as far as what's supporting culturally, what's supporting keeping the relationship together or not. You know, what are both of your beliefs about how difficult should relationship be? Is there going to be difficult times where you need to grow through together? Do you believe that already? Or do you think any bumps in the road means something's wrong? And so that, that's a whole other can of worms, uh, probably for another episode, absolutely. But yeah. I want to circle it back to what you had said when she said, when she says things like, this won't last, or uh, it won't matter what you do, or I don't trust this new man that you are being. Uh, one question is, how do we know if we're moving away from the bad, nice guy habits? We're unlearning those nice guy habits. And if you are doing things to try to get a reaction from her, a pat on the head, you know, a kiss, sex, you know that you're still entrenched in those tit for tat nice guy habits. Covert contracts, trying to get some, do exactly. something to get something. Exactly, exactly. But if you're doing it for you, because that's the man that you are, if you make the bed in the morning, because that's the man that you are, if you exercise six days a week, because that's the man that you are, if you're kind to your children, if you're kind to her, even though things are, uh, you know, contentious between the two of you, just because that's the man that you are, well, that will last. And when she says she doesn't believe it will, she's thinking of your bad habits from the past that you're overcoming. And she must see consistency over time. The words aren't going to make her believe you're going to change. It's the consistency over time that will help her believe that. But you're doing it for you. You're doing it because that's the kind of man you want to be. And so if you do get a, a positive comment for her, from her, that's just a bonus. Now, you're not expecting anything from her if you're truly moving past nice guy bad habits and you're moving into this stage two of growing your own value within yourself and growing a healthy space between the two of you. Also, in other words, you're not relying on her to tell you that you're okay today. You no. tell you you're okay today. Well, and there's none of that validation seeking we see with the nice guys, you know, and it's the vicious cycle, you know, you're, you're looking for that approval, the morsel, the crumb from her to, you know, that everything's okay or that you're doing something right. It never comes. And, you know, I, I <laughs> when I was divorced, I went from not having a clue, being a mess, to seeking 
approval and validation from other women. You know, I was the ex end of the relationship, didn't know back then there was no chance of fixing it. The two year clock had run, she was done. You know, I, I know now what I didn't know then. And I tried to fill my buckets with validation from other women. And that was unhealthy to say the least. Uh, fortunately, I did at least stop doing that after a period of time and became aware that it, this just isn't sustainable because you can't yeah, let me ask get you enough that. into an end, a bucket with a bunch of holes. You can't pour enough water into it. So true. Let me ask you about that. A question I get often from guys is, well, when should I start dating other women? Should I start talking with other women? What about sex? I haven't dated in 15 years. That was me. I haven't dated in 13 years. Well, what the hell do I do? And so guys ask me that question. What would you say about that as far as the seeking validation elsewhere? Well, I don't like to put strict time limits, but I always say there's no reason to date for a couple of months, couple, three months. Serious relationships, there's no business early on because the reality is, as you're doing this work, you need to be comfortable with the man you're becoming and with yourself. If you can't have a weekend alone or a day alone, whether it's at home or in the woods, and be completely comfortable being by yourself, you're really not ready to be in a relationship with somebody else. And I live alone, okay? I have a girlfriend, but I've had friends ask me, don't you get lonely? And I'm like, uh, no. They're like, but you live alone. I'm like, I have an amazing girlfriend. I've got wonderful kids. I have a bunch of amazing friends, both local and, you know, far away. I have, I have an amazing life. I'm never lonely. In fact, I sometimes get too busy doing stuff. And it's, <laughs> you know, my girlfriend and I, we've talked about this. The nights where we have dinner and just kind of hang out and do nothing are as important to our relationship as all the things that we do, because we don't get a lot of that kind of quiet time to talk and connect and just be with each other without other interference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think too many people put activities in and want to start dating and they're really, if they're not done getting down the road on working on themselves, they're really doing themselves a disservice. There is a lifetime ahead of you, three or six months is never going to make a difference on dating. You you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, you've got decades left, most likely. So, and as you found out, it's different compared to when, you know, I know from when I met my first wife to when I became single, it was a different world. Holy cow. And if you are a man who has <laughs> yeah. his shit together, it is an amazing, fun world out there for you. Yeah, yeah. The top 1% of guys, basically, you could say that, when the shit hits the fan, they're calm, they're centered, they're that mountain lion man that knows what they want and they know how to lead and move forward in a compassionate way, you yeah. know, in a mature way, absolutely. Uh, so, okay, I agree with you totally that, they, that a guy should not date for a few months, at the very least. And I think it hurts them to actually date too early because we're just covering the, the pain of not wanting to feel alone. So my question for you is, it sounds like how many people are living in your house has nothing to do with how lonely that you are. I mean, how many guys out there, including me five years ago, were very lonely in a full house? It's because the issues, you know, the things we learn and the things we teach now that, you know, yeah, they're because they're not happy. They're, they don't have that calm, centered confidence. They don't have the type of a connection and emotional uh, connection with their spouse and whether they know it or not there's that underlying issue and and that you know you 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 hear about all these famous people who feel so alone and have issues and it's like everyone thinks they have a great life but you're right you could have a house full of people have what people think is an amazing life and be incredibly lonely and unhappy with your existence because you don't know who you are yeah. Yeah. That's, that reminds me of the, the ahas that a guy will have during this phase of coaching during grow stage two, phase two of starting to validate him on his own self. Like 
t- patting himself on the back. You know, I can tell myself, yeah, I hit all my goals today. I've been a good man today. I've given my kids attention today and given my efforts into the world. And I don't have to wait for a pat on the head from her to feel good about myself. That's a huge one. Yeah. What's, some, what's another one? Um, that, that type of behavior and self-validation when no one is looking, you know, mm. you do the right thing because that's how you are. Um, you know, it is uh, not falling back and backsliding into the bad habits of stage one because this isn't a linear journey. So, you know, and then the guys we work with, if you do and you catch it, you screwed up, you own it and apologize. You don't need to apologize for her feelings and emotions that have, you know, that aren't grounded in your behaviors, but in her, you know, in, in truly in just her emotions. But when you screw up, own it, apologize, don't dwell on it, but be aware and then let's work on not repeating that because again, the consistency is the key. Yeah, I agree. Totally. Here's a question. Well, how do I know if I screwed up or not? And I think the answer to that certainly is take it to the men. Take that question to your trusted guy friends or your, your good guys to great men community or other men that you trust in your life that will not pull punches that are actually going to be non-biased and tell you what's what they feel and what's, true for them and how that resonates for them and hey they'll maybe share a story with you and be vulnerable with you right it's not about crying on each other's shoulder but we have to have people to go to some men to go to to bounce these questions off of to know do i should i apologize here you know did i make a mistake am i in the wrong or am i just kowtowing and am i being a doormat and you could argue that a strong it takes a strong confident man to apologize Oh, absolutely. Nobody wants to say they screwed up. You know, I, it's, I wasn't very good at that in my first relationship. (laughs) I think I could count on two hands how many times I apologized in 17 years. I was an avoider, you know, and so, but I'm aware of that now. And, you, you know, it's, it takes that man who is comfortable with himself to go, you know what? I didn't handle that very well. I screwed up. I want to apologize. You know, try to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I was I'm on. Again. I was on the other end of the spectrum there of the nice guy of take overly taking responsibility and overly apologizing or say, oh, it's you know all my fault kind of a thing. Uh, the self-loathing, even the victim mentality of like, oh, I couldn't help it kind of thing, or I'm such a bad person. You know, that would be the pendulum swing for me in the really bad times. So I think guys can relate to both of those. It's, it's the overly apologizing or the never owning up and thinking yeah. that that's how somehow better. Yeah. yeah, there's either extreme is no good. And uh, I think the not apologizing causes resentment. I would say the over apologizing, that extreme causes a lack of respect. It's just different kinds of... How does it affect your partner? You know, when you're not that that in the middle where you should be. Yeah, completely. So let's let's talk about what it looks like to move into phase three, which will be another podcast, certainly another episode of. And that phase three is ask. So guys want to know, well, what am I going to ask for what I want in a relationship, or how do I ask her to meet me in the middle, or how do I ask her to have a conversation with me or go on a date with me or talk about the kids with me when things are such a shit show. And so before you can ask or even be ready to ask for what you want in a relationship or ask for what you want from your own self, you've got to stop making mistakes like phase one and grow depth within yourself as a man, validate yourself and grow a healthy space with her. And you'll know that that's happening when you're being the man you want to be you're relying on your own gauge within yourself of if you're having a good day, you're not worried if she's validating you and that you get those bonuses that when she says thank you or when someone you know, really appreciates something, you weren't doing it just to get the thank you. So their thank you is a bonus. Her being nice today is a bonus. Her saying, hey, thanks for doing that with the kids 
is a bonus because you didn't do that just to try to get a pat on the head. When you're in that spot, then you're going to start moving into specifically phase three of how to ask from yourself and how to ask for the relationship what you want. And you use the analogy when we were talking another time about the house. You know, you've got the foundation laid. You're starting to frame it out. You know, she's seeing the consistency over time as you're getting into stage three. And you're going to do the ask. You also are going to ask yourself, what do you want out of yourself in life? Exactly. Um, it's interesting. The guys who do the work, this is the stage a lot of times where you, their spouse will start to lean back into them. And mm. some of the shields will come down and there's less anger and resentment. I think there's a little bit of belief that, okay, that you've changed and now they're, they're still not 100% certain, but they see the change and they've started to realize it isn't just for a month or two. Yeah. And when her comments of this isn't going to last or what is, where did you read this or what is going on here? Are you trying to be a therapist now? You know, when she says those <laughs> offhanded kind of shit test, confidence test, congruence test comments that they'll roll off you. You can laugh about them or you can say, you know, yeah, I am actually trying something new. I want to see how it goes. Or I really should have focused on this uh, in the past. And I recognize that now. So, hey, it's time to take a step forward in life. When you're able to say those things and let those roll off, you know that you're moving forward as a man. And that's what she wants to feel. She wants to feel that she can shoot some stuff out and you can roll with it. You can let it bounce off or you can play with it and make a joke about it. That's going to help her feel more safe. That's what she means about space. She doesn't want to have to feel like she needs to validate you every moment or you're going to ask her the same question 12 times in a row. <laughs> Right. She doesn't you, you need another roll. child to take care of. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Phenomenal. So, Good. Well, I'm looking forward to the next conversation about phase three of ask, but yeah, let's let guys in on uh, our March retreat. If they haven't heard yet, what's your uh, temperature out there in Colorado today? It was 41 today, which is not bad. It's a heat wave. Like, We're 30. January, yeah. January 29th, yeah. 34 there with snow on the ground from last night. And All right. Do you know what the temperature is going to, the average temperature in Phoenix is in early March? I do. I happen to look it up. It's 77 degrees in early March in Phoenix. And summer. there's not a lot of humidity. Right. It, it is going to be a great weekend. I mean, fun, men's work. You and I are there. We've got some others. We're going to have a blast. How would you describe the house that we've got? Oh, man. It's like a, it's a guy palace. There's a pool table. I think, what is it, 11 bedrooms? Right, Dennis? And so it's got a, so, yeah. yeah, a chef's kitchen. Dennis and I have been chefs in the past and we love cooking for people. So we're going to do professional chef level meals for everybody. We'll trade off, he and I. That's going to be some of the phenomenal stuff. There's games. I mean, it's going to be a man's palace. It's even a Pac Man game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's old school. I like that. Uh, yeah, the grounds are wonderful. And again, 77 degrees if we get real unlucky it might hit 85 and we might actually sweat but you know yeah we're titling it the it's our attractive man retreat how do you be that attractive man that you want to be like how do you know that you're attractive to your wife or your girlfriend right do you know how to nurture and grow and attract that intimacy right into the relationship and that's these are some of the the questions we have on uh, our retreat website here on, on your website share that website with them again and tell us more about you know why go why if i'm a guy i'm thinking about this i i want to move through these stages of coaching i want to be more solid within myself and i need to know what it looks like to be an attractive man and how the hell to do that right share the website and share what more of this is about so it's www.manoflegacy.org slash retreats and uh you know i'm i'm gonna go back and talk about i've been to one of steve's retreats and plain and simple it these retreats are life-changing you make friendships and relationships that will last possibly lifetime you know uh and you get the equivalent of some of these coaching packages that we do you know, condense down and cover, we're going to cover a lot of material and 
there's no way you're going to leave without at least one or two aha moments in our activity got to have something to do too we can't just do all work and no play right we're going to go to the gun range and take both a basic and an advanced handgun course we're going to put over 500 rounds down range because the you need to be when you're handling a gun calm and confident just like in a relationship when a shit test hits you out of left field you know and when you handle those with that type of calmness and centeredness it makes you attractive as all get out and a lot of guys don't think about this but when you do this work you end up having better relationships and higher performance at work this isn't just something for at home this affects your whole life and there's not been a man i've worked with that hasn't said their relationship with their kids has also improved tremendously so you know you want to be attractive to the people in your life your coworkers your your spouse your children and be that guy that they want to be with and that they're attracted to because of your behaviors yeah and we want to know exactly how to do that <laughs> how yeah. do i show up right so you're going to come to the retreat you're going to practice with us you're going to practice with the other men so you can go back and implement it into your life so you know exactly what to do how to be that man for yourself and for the relationship and for your family. Yeah, it is something that uh, if you're not coaching one-on-one -on -one, or even if you are, I think you will find it one of the best values you could find for your dollar on from a working on yourself, self-improvement. Oh, I will guarantee that it's worth every dollar. Absolutely. Yeah. Completely Look on the phenomenal. website. It is an all-inclusive weekend. You know, from the mm -hmm. time you show up to the time you leave, uh, we are going to have, uh, you're going to have high quality individuals. It's just going to be a good time and yeah. you're going to learn tons. And it I know we already, yeah, I was going to say, I know we already have two guys that are going. Um, we're basically just launching this. So yeah. I'm pumped for it, man. I'm so excited. You know, it's going to be a fun time. We are going to have a blast whether there's two or whether there's 10. Uh, it doesn't matter. It It's just going to be, and again, March in Phoenix isn't a bad venue. <laughs> yeah, man. If, even if it's just you and I, we're doing it. That's what we said. When, when oh, we yeah. want to do, when we're going to do this, we're going to have fun no matter what. And Dennis and I are going to do it no matter what. And if you want to join us, hell yeah. I had a friend say, oh, there's this great gun range in Kansas City. Why don't you do it there? Da, 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 da. And I said, who wants to go to Kansas City in March? <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> I mean, I love you, bud, but probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I said, we want to make it so it's fun too. So exactly. Check out the webpage again, manoflegacy.org. You'll see a tab up in the upper right it says retreats. You know, it says March, 2020 retreat. And uh, come join us. It, like I said, good bang for the buck. Guarantee you'll get more than your money's worth. And you will make some relationships that will last a lifetime. Absolutely, man. Every single time. I, I've, I think I've attended six retreats, five of which I was working, four of which I was co-leading with Steve up at his ranch retreat. I went to one myself in 2015, paid and went, you know, just like every other man. So I've been there and I can guarantee it's worth it. Absolutely. I love it. It's going to be fun. I, and, and same here. You know, that, that retreat last year at Steve's was, it was just amazing. And like I said, the connections made. You know, I still, I still talk to those guys on a regular basis. They're yeah. High quality men. Exactly. It's a chance to meet real high quality men from around the country and around the world. We have guys come from all over. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. And guys who are listening, if you've listened this far, you like today's podcast, I'd ask you just hit the subscribe button down below the screen. And that way you can be notified when there's a new post. And that way you'll automatically know when we, Come on and talk about stage three. Hell yeah. Loved it. Right, Thanks, man. Dennis. Jeff, have a great week. Hey, you too, bud. Talk to you later. Talk to you soon.